see future trends. Okay. So I created an article uh, in three specific niches, the your commerce niche, your money and markets niche, and then you're gonna have your crypto, which I think are gonna be the three overlining narratives of 2024. So let me go ahead and pull this up. Through my eight months of research for 2024, I kind of put this into perspective. So these are trends for 2024. The first one is e-commerce. Direct to consumer brands begin to receive a new wave of funding in private equity investments. So if you look at 2021, 2022, private equity, when it comes to e-commerce, tanked completely. I see another resurgence of investments into IP and into brand in the e-commerce niches. So for all these drop shippers, all these white labelers, begin to understand that there's going to be businesses that are going to be buying business, which they're going to be good to talk to you yeah. uh, to get well positioned. Next is info products will begin to legitimize themselves and directly compete with universities and learning institutions. So now why would I listen to this professor that's never been overseas about international business when I can go and sit down with somebody that has international business experience and just listen to them on YouTube? So now you have e-learning, which has been almost any phase of new technological advancement usually gets capitalized and captured by low interest and more predatory individuals. So you look at 2007. 2017, 2015, 2014 crypto, it was more scammy, right? Because it's brand new, there isn't real shit built on it. It's the same thing with info products and e-learning. The first people on the initial wave was the people that could milk the money out. But today you have real, real learning institutions online that are competing with the best of the best. Yeah. I see this as a trend in 2024. Next is political themed e-commerce and drop shipping. So all 2024. Because of the election year? Yes, massive. Mm -hmm. I made a ton of money selling a Donald Trump a coin last uh, election. So it was just a coin that had Donald Trump's profile face and it was your memorabilia token and people bought a ton of it. Next you have uh, dominant in influencers uh, continue to build, scale and sell IRL businesses. So now you're gonna begin to see influencers, the likes of Mr. Beast and the likes of Luke Belmar be in a situation whereby you're building collateral businesses like the Nile River that we were talking about as proxy small empires around your traffic source. So I see a lot of content creators now no longer doing merch, these simple kind of basic 101s of, of commerce, but utilizing their audiences and building real products. So now you can translate loyalty from here to loyalty here. And once you have a loyalty on the product, you can sell that company. Yeah, I love that. Next is health, longevity, and wellness becomes a top white hat monthly recurring revenue e-commerce niche. Gary Brecka told me this. He said they did a massive report uh, as to what are the emerging trends and niches and biohacking longevity health and wellness and anti-aging were at the top over any other category in all of commerce. So I see that being a, becoming super powerful. Next, uh, I'm big on Shopify. Anytime Shopify keeps ramping up, I love it. Money and markets, uh, the US continues spending, nothing new there, we already know it. Debt spiral, boom, everything that we already know. Bitcoin ETF gets approved. Obviously this was written a couple of days ago, but now I see a big narrative towards Ethereum ETF. We are gonna get an Ethereum ETF eventually. It is inevitable when you begin to look at all these big companies. Well, all that Bitcoin is is a financial instrument where they can take a fee, make some money and, and have market dominance. Why would do they do the same with ethereum or why wouldn't they do that the same with a basket of crypto assets so it's worth considering at least paying attention next you have your competing layer ones so you have solana you have avax you have these other kind of chains that people like to have high frequency trading ecosystems take place so for example you have this whole shitcoin ecosystem which people like it hate it it's irrelevant it's a system that exists. Bitcoin can't sustain that ecosystem because Bitcoin isn't designed for high frequency trading. So now you see a lot of layer ones that are designed for people that want to buy $6 worth of something and it's only going to cost them a fraction of a penny. There's a market for that. I think that that's going to be one of the narratives that's going to be taking place when it comes to money and markets. So anything that's layer ones that dominate with high frequency trading, I think it's going to be dope. PayPal, and Robinhood stock, super underperformed stocks. I think now that the market begins to take form, there's a high likelihood that these stocks perform extremely well. Venture capital private equi equity begins to invest into crypto infrastructure. So a lot of companies that are risk adverse towards projects that have token allocations and tokens, there's companies that will not touch this for legal purposes, but they will still buy infrastructure in crypto. They will still buy SaaS in crypto. So for builders, you don't necessarily need to launch a token. You don't necessarily need to build something that's what's already been built. You can build a crypto friendly company that is is of interest for people who are in the crypto space, but that isn't tied to crypto specifically. Now you can invest not in tokens, but in projects that sustain the crypto ecosystem. I see a massive narrative there. For crypto and DeFi, DeFi platforms shift focus to reducing retail onboarding friction 
and begin to compete head on with centralized exchanges. So you have the likes of Jupiter Exchange or Phantom Wallet. If I if I was to show you Phantom Wallet right now, I download the Phantom Wallet in 30 seconds. I open up Jupiter Exchange. Somebody sends me USDC and I'm trading in 10 minutes. For me to open up a Robinhood account, get KYC, fund it, connect ACH, connect my card, get it funded, buy some Bitcoin takes a long time. I see DeFi very soon competing head on hand hand with centralized exchanges, with your Webulls, with your E-Trades, with your Ameritrades. DeFi is getting really, really crazy and it's getting really, really well funded. NFTs with high viral IP become multi-billion dollar brands. NFTs are merely your ability to hold on to a percentage or a piece of a company or be part of a community. Companies that have high value IP that can merge into the real world are going to do extremely well. You have the likes of Pudgy Penguins. You have a couple other companies that are doing extremely well. These are worth considering and looking into only if they have real world applications. You look at the likes of, you talked about Pokemon. Pokemon, that's IP. So you're not investing in Pokemon cards. You're investing into the IP that gives the Pokemon cards value. And I think that that's one of these narratives that's going to be taking place. Next is tokenized assets under management. So I see a big play. Larry Fink has been talking about the tokenization of all real world assets, everything, real estate, mortgages, your bank statements, your car loan, your house, anything is going to be tokenized. So companies that begin to build portfolios or begin to take money in to manage assets in a tokenized format, I think are going to be kind of extremely popular. Next, we have more publicly traded companies begin to add Bitcoin to their balance sheets. I think now that you had this reporting system kind of update, my companies have Bitcoin in their balance sheet. It's never going to leave. I think more public listed companies are going to begin adopting it. I think that's going to be huge. And then one of the big ones is layer one smart contracts focused on parallel execution of the EVM, which is the Ethereum virtual machine become popular. So this is basically L1s or different projects that allow Ethereum to not operate like a piece of shit because right now it operates like a piece of shit. And then finally, the big one for the end of the year is the middle class officially gets priced out of buying one full Bitcoin. Mm. Yeah.